Hey again, so today I'm going to be reviewing The Dead Girls Dance by Rachel Kane. So I'll start by reading the back of the book. Good news girls, your dates are here. Bad news girls, they're dead. Claire Danvers has had her share of challenges, like being a genius in a school that favours beauty over brains, dealing with the homicidal girls in her dorm, and, above all, finding out that her college town is overrun with blood-sucking fiends. On the plus side, so far Claire and her friends have managed to survive getting on the wrong side of some Morganville VIPs. Vampire and important persons, but their temporary peace is in danger of collapsing thanks to the arrival of her new boyfriend's scary father and his vampire fighting supporters. Okay, so I'll start again with the cover. Again, I much prefer this cover to the original cover, so I will again show that at the end of this video. This is a sort of comparison that even though these are now being um, have been redone with the very stereotypical paranormal romance vampire um, covers, they are much better than what they were. So that's a plus. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to rate this book like the first book, 4 out of 5, because I couldn't really fault the writing, the plot, the characters. They were all, you know, good. And I, I can't fault them, but it was just like the first one. It carried on in the same vein, and it was very samey. Um, the good thing was it did pick up straight away from the cliffhanger in the first one. You got to find out everything that was happening quickly. And that was resolved, which was a plus. I didn't have to, it didn't start like a week later and you were then filled in. Um, so that was good. Um, okay, plot wise, uh, Shane's dad and his biker friends show up to save them from the situation at the end of the first book. But then he stirs up trouble for them. Because at the moment they're under Amelie's protection and she's the founder and the oldest vampire, so she has the most power in Morganville, so to be under her protection is a good thing, but you should be untouchable. But Shane's dad comes and he stirs up trouble by killing a vampire, so then all bets are off, and he also kidnaps Monica, the mayor's daughter, and as much as everyone hates her because she is still a bitch in this, and there are some unbelievable bits with her in there, like she's almost going to be killed or blowtorched, and she's still horrible to Claire, which is just unbelievable. Um, and if they can get Monica back from Shane's dad, then Shane won't be executed because they took Shane's as thinking he killed the vampire. Okay, I'm waffling now. Um, so basically Claire has to fight to save Shane. And um, so she is getting stronger. At the beginning of the first book, she's very much weak, being bullied. But as she progresses, she's getting much stronger which is good to see. Um, what I did like about this book was we got to see more about Shane's past and his family and what happened after his sister died. Um, a little bit more about him which was good and I hope that as the series progresses we get much more on the characters because everything's told from Claire's point of view so we want, we want, we want more about the other characters. Um, we also find out more about Eve, the other girl in the glass house and I'm, I'm really liking uh, Eve's backstory. It's a little, um, little sad. Um, and her brother gets released, her younger brother gets released from prison and that sets her on edge because he then starts to bother her. Not stalk her, but he just um, unnerves her a little bit. Um, he was sent to prison uh, for stabbing a girl and killing her and then just as he's let out other girls are turning up dead so that's another element to the story what I didn't like so much was that there wasn't so much on that I mean you find out that he's been released you find out what he did but you're not finding out there's not I think there should be more focus on that plot line as well I know it was, would probably be hard to write two parallel um, storylines but just a little bit more on on that aspect of it because she mentioned it several times and then there wasn't more of it so now you're waiting for the next book which I'm sure it'll carry on into the next book but I kind of wanted more of that as well as the other story um, another great thing that I liked about this was Michael um, now he's a ghost um, and he dies at like sunset every night and turns into a ghost and then he turns human again in the morning um, and he's getting very frustrated because his friends are in trouble and he can't leave the house. So there's a build up with him and a surprise with him. While there's 
he has two kind of surprises with him and I do quite like that they're, she does tend to throw some surprises in there some you can kind of see coming um, so that is another plus um, and there's another character Sam and now he's tied in with Michael he's not in the first book and he's the youngest vampire in the world um, so humans they don't trust him because they don't tr trust vampires all through um, they didn't want to really talk to him and the vampires don't trust him because he's the youngest so he's really lonely and he befriends Eve and Claire and he um, plays a big part in helping them out so oh I should really say about the relevance of the title really um, the dead girls dance is literally a dance where everyone has to dress up gothic like zombies or vampires um, it's a college like um, event everyone goes and Claire gets invited but not for the reasons that she thinks at first so yeah I, w I would still rate this 4 out of 5 because it's very much the same as the first one um, again I couldn't really fault the plot it was it was a good plot and she, it was executed on it again it ends on a cliffhanger so you, um, you have to read the next one um, so yeah I would recommend this for fans of the genre because overall it is it is a good light-hearted uh, how can like a dark um paranormal book be light-hearted but it is it's not too heavy to read you can just read it and then read something else if you want the cliffhangers aren't well they are kind of major but for me i don't love the series so much that i'm thinking oh my god what happens next i just think oh i wonder what happens next and then i'll pick the next book up when i feel like reading it um so I've moved on to reading Divergent now, so I'll be reviewing that next. Um, so yeah, I would still recommend this for fans of this genre, um, just to give it a try really, because it's been out a while. This this was published in like 2007, so it's been out a while before a lot of the um, vampire ones have been, you know, sort of just rolled out back when they were still sort of relatively coming out steadily, but now they're just mass produced, these vampire books. Um, yeah, four or five, definitely recommend it, and happy reading!